so ka to wa so ka to wa so ka to wa. All right, so we're learning the other trig functions. Um, many people use this um, this the word to try to remember what they what they all are. In the last section, which was an absolutely crucial section, where we introduced sine and cosine, the trig functions that changed the world forever, and uh, we're about to learn the other functions. There's a total of six. So far, you've only we've only learned two. Um, many people use this word to try to remember what what the uh, uh, trick functions are. They use the S O H to to try to remember that that um, that the sine function sine of any theta would be opposite over hypotenuse. That's where the S O H sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And then they try to remember that this one this way. The cosine uh, cosine of any angle theta would be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And so you have the C A H cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And here's a new one for you. We never we didn't do this one last time, but uh, it's time to introduce it. This one represents the tangent. We write T A N and we pronounce it tangent. And the tangent function works in a very, very similar way to these other ones where you take the angle theta, you draw the reference triangle, you label the sides, and you pick up a certain ratio of that of those sides. The tangent picks up the ratio opposite over adjacent. And that's why this word makes it sort of easy to remember. T O A tangent is opposite over adjacent. So ka toa. So ka toa. Sine is opposite of hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent of hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite of adjacent. Um, all right, those are that's a new one right there. Tangent, and then there's some other ones. If you take this guy right here, the sine, and you flip this ratio, instead of doing opposite over hypotenuse, what if you did the opposite? You did uh, hypotenuse over opposite. Well, that's a famous, famous function, and this one is called the cosecant of theta. Cosecant. It really is just a sine inverted. You could think about it this way: one over sine theta. Okay, and this one too. If you were to invert the ratio, instead of doing adjacent divided by hypotenuse, if we did hypotenuse divided by adjacent, we get a very, very famous function and this function is the uh, multiplicative inverse of cosine and it's called the co or, or the secant S I C secant of theta. Secant theta, the opposite of uh, the multiplicative opposite of cosine. Okay, you invert it. This one also has a close relative, the tangent. Uh, when you flip these guys you get something called the cotangent. Cotangent of theta is equal to uh, adjacent over opposite. And this is how most people uh, remember them, or most beginners anyways, they learn this word soka toa, which helps them remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and all that stuff, and then you flip these and you get the other three. These are probably the most famous. In some sense, all the other ones come from these. Um, but, if you have it in your heart and in your soul, then Maybe you, you don't need that. Um, hopefully, you work with these so much that um, you learn them. Even if you don't even try to memorize them, they should be second nature to you. It's like you don't need to remember. You know, I have four kids. I don't need to make up a word to remember the kids' names. It's, it's just natural. This is the way this stuff should be. Um, so, with some reluctance, I post put this up here. But if it helps you remember, okay, that's fine then. Um, all right, so let's. This is these are the other. This is a total of six functions: uh, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Let's practice that. We should be able to practice this on all sorts of famous angles. And what I mean by famous angles is angles that end up in either the 30-60 triangle or 45-45 or an almost triangle. Anything that ends on one of those, we should already know any of the six fun. Um, trick values uh, with no calculators, no tables, nothing but heart and noodle power. Okay, let's try it. 
Okay, let's try uh, tangent of 30 degrees. Here we go. Um, tangent, you would draw your reference triangle for 30 degrees, and you could make the hypotenuse any length you want. I'll make it length 2. This is 30 degrees. Across from it, you find the smallest one, which is always half the hypotenuse. That would make it 1. Across from 60, you would find uh, the medium one, which is the square root of 3 times the 1, times the small side. To the right is positive, up is positive. I've got everything labeled. From this point of view, I know that the tangent is opposite. Tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So, um, tangent would be up from here. The opposite is 1. The adjacent is the square root of 3. There you go. See that? Oh, some of you may be thinking about rationalizing the denominator. Um, that's for the birds. Alright, let's do another one. Um, let's do uh, secant of 225 degrees. Okay, no calculators, nothing but noodle power. Uh, first, you draw the reference triangle for 225 degrees. That would be 180 plus 45 more. That would. This is called the reference angle. This whole thing is called the reference triangle. Let's label it. Let's make the uh, hypotenuse any length we want. Um, how about square root of 2? Perfect. From the 45-45 triangle, to get the other ones, you divide by the square root of 2. So this would be 1. This would be 1. If you go left, it's negative. If you go down, it's negative. Hypotenuse is always positive. There it is labeled. Now, secant, secant ratio would be hypotenuse divided by adjacent. From this point of view, uh, from this point of view, we need hypotenuse over adjacent. The hypotenuse is the square root of 2, and the adjacent one is negative 1. There you go. It's the square root of 2 over negative 1. No calculators. Nothing but pride um, in understanding. This, um, okay, you, some of you guys may have these little tricks to memorize these fast, and if you want to, that's fine, but really, I, doing it fast and easy is not my priority. Fast and easy is overrated. It's like fast food. What I care most about is deep understanding. Understanding that all these trick functions are really ratios of sides of the triangles that's so crucial for me um, because it, you'll be using that over and over again for the rest of your life um, not really for the rest of this course yes and maybe calculus as well anyways uh, let's try some more pick any of the trick any of the six trick functions at any angle you want say um, I don't know let's do cotangent of 90 degrees. That one might pose a different challenge. Cotangent of 90 degrees. First thing I do is I draw the reference triangle for 90 degrees, which is hard to do, so I draw 89.9999, which is an almost triangle, and I draw it perpendicular always to the x-axis. I label these things. I'll make this 2, 0. I'll make this side 2. That one's got to be almost 2 as well. So, from this point of view, which one's the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse? The opposite is 2, adjacent is 0, hypotenuse is 2. For cotangent, for cotangent, I got to pick up the ratio. It's adjacent over opposite. Adjacent over opposite. So from this point of view, the adjacent one is 0, the opposite one is um, 2, therefore, Cotangent of 90 degrees is zero. Okay, we, we got kind of lucky on that one, but maybe it's a really good time to point out a couple things. Um, we've said before that the hypotenuse on these reference triangles is never zero. It's a non-zero length. It's a positive length. So these ones were pretty safe to never have a zero on the denominator because their denominators is the hypotenuse. These are the only ones that you can say that for. All the other ones are in danger. Look at this. The tangent, the denominator is adjacent. That one could very well be zero sometimes. In fact, it is for some angles. Um, same thing for the 
cosecant. Cosecant, the, the denominator is opposite, so sometimes that could be zero. Same thing for secant, cotangent. So, these functions may not be divide, defined for certain angles, and, it, and it's a general fact that the sine and cosine functions are good for every single possible angle, whereas these other ones, you got to watch out. Sometimes they may not be defined, specifically when the bottom turns out to be zero, when the denominator is equal to zero. Let's try one of those. Uh, suppose you did tangent. Uh, suppose we do tangent of 90 degrees. Well, I've already got the reference triangle here, so I might as well just use this one. Tangent is defined to be the opposite over the adjacent. So from this point of view, the opposite one is 2, the adjacent is 0. That's not a real number. And so this is undefined. Now there is no real re real number ratio tangent 90 degrees. Mm. A fancy way to say that is that 90 degrees has to be excluded from the domain for the tangent function. Um, and we'll talk more about that um, in the next chapter. For now, let me continue practicing seeing some of these. The idea is that for any of these six functions, you should be able to find them. You should own them with no calculators, no silly little tables, nothing but pride and noodle power. So, let's pick an angle, anything that ends in a famous triangle. Um, say, 300 degrees. In fact, why don't we do this? Why don't we find all six functions for 300 degrees? Uh, let's dominate the 300 degrees. For 300 degrees, the reference triangle would go something like this. 300, 360. Whoops, that was too much. you got to come back. 60, so that this guy right here is 60 degrees. And this other here one would be 300 degrees. Then you draw perpendicular. This would be 30 degrees. Uh, you can make it any length you want. Let's make it length 2. Uh, I always I like 2 because look what happens next. Across from 30, you always find half of the hypotenuse. Half of the hypotenuse. So if this is 2, that's easy to take half of that. It's 1. And the other one is always the square root of 3 times that one. From the center, you go to the right. That's positive. You go down. That's negative. There it is. Uh, then, from this point of view, you're ready to answer just about every single question that somebody could throw at you. Let's, let's see, let's, um, let's practice this. What is the sine of 300 degrees? Uh, easy. Let me give you a hint over here. Sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. So, from this point of view, the opposite would be way opposite of it. That would be the square root of 3, negative square root of 3, over the hypotenuse. There it is, sine of 300. Let's do cosine of 300 degrees. Well, from this point of view, this, the cosine ratio is the adjacent of hypotenuse. So from this point of view, the adjacent one is 1. Hypotenuse is 2, so this one's got to be 1 half. Let's do the tangent. Tangent of 300 degrees. Tangent is opposite of adjacent. From this point of view, the opposite one is negative square root of 3. Adjacent one is 1. There's your tangent. Let's do cotangent of 300 degrees. I know cotangent, all it does is flip these ones, so I've got to have 1 over negative square root of 3. Uh, let's do secant of 300. I know the secant, all it does is flip the cosine. So whatever I had here, 1 over 2, I'll just flip it. This is 2 over 1. Let's try the cosecant of 300 degrees. I know that the cosecant, all it does is flip the sine, so if sine of 300 over square root of 3 over 2, all I do is flip those 2 over negative square root of 3, and there's my uh, cosecant of 300 degrees, just like that. You should own these. Everything that's a famous angle, you should, you should not you should be able to calculate everything with no notes or nothing, you know, you just uh, noodle power. Understanding the 30-60 triangles and the 45-45 triangles and the almost triangles. And this little Soka Toa thing. Um, 
I think that's that's a really short lecture today, but um, it's short, but it's very very important. Uh, it's these six trig functions which we will study for the rest of the semester. Uh, we'll do nothing but study all their properties. Um, absolutely such a crucial section today. So I do hope that you will uh, take the time to uh, read the notes and do the homework. Um, post any questions that you got on the blog. And um, we'll see you guys here next time. Uh, peace.